Welcome to the Biopharma Finder help video. In this, in this example, I'm going to show you how to process an intact protein analysis experiment. First, we're going to begin by adding our protein sequence. So click on the Protein Sequence Manager. I've already added the protein sequence, but I'm going to show you um, what I actually did to do this. So I'm going to click on the example um, MAB intact, and I'm going to click Edit. I have other help videos on specific details if you uh, want to check those out on how to add and bring in protein sequences. So for this example, the data file that I have is an intact antibody analysis. So the molecule is, is 100 and, uh, 145,000 Dalton protein. Okay, so we have to make sure we bring in the correct protein sequence when we're doing this. And so for this example, um, what we have is we need to bring in the light chain, heavy chain, heavy chain, and light chain. So we need to make sure that we have two copies of each chain uh, to make sure we get the correct molecular weight. And so when you see the monoisotopic mass up here, this is actually adding up all of the amino acids to give you the total mass of everything that's in our protein sequence map uh, window. If you want to look at the individual chains, you can masses, you can see that here. And so you can see the first one is the light chain, and then chain number four is also a light chain, and then here's the masses of the individual heavy chains. So what we need to do, also this is a, a non-reduced sample, so we need to uh, connect all the disulfide bonds. So you can go through and connect the disulfide bonds. You do this by right-clicking on it, and you'll create a link, and then you can bridge it to another one here. I'll show you how to do it. So if we want to connect those two cysteines, uh, click on the right left side of the cysteine, right-click, create link, and then come to the next cysteine, click on it, and you're clicking to the left side of the C, right-click, bridge link. So that's going to connect them together. Okay, so now we formed a disulfide bond. So after you've gone through and connected all your bonds, in this example, I think there's 16 disulfide bonds, and you can s review that information down here. In case you make a mistake, you can uh, click on one and delete it to make sure you've gotten it done properly. Then I also added um, two uh, static modifications. So I double-clicked on the N-terminus of the heavy chain to add uh, the... Um, modification there and also added it here as well and this gives me the correct molecular weight of the molecule so I'm going to um, so I already saved this so I'm going to uh, just cancel out okay so I have this added to my protein sequence manager now let's go back to the home page we're going to go to the intact protein analysis now this is um, exactly the same as protein deconvolution 4.0. So those of you who have, may have used uh, deconvolution 4.0, hopefully you'll find that uh, the software is exactly the same, and uh, so there should be very little um, learning curve. And those of you who are new to the software, hopefully I can help um, you uh, figure out how to process your data. So when you uh, first start, you have some different types of options here. So you have a manual extract, which will look at isotopically resolved data only. You have um, manual respect, which is for non-resolved, uh, isotopically resolved data. And then you can run these two in more of an automated way as well. So uh, how you would use this is, let's say that we, um, in this example, I have um, a single file, and then I processed, um, you know, some same sample two or three days later. I could take my single file, and I can use um, manual respect, for example. I can create a method, so now I have all the parameters that I want. I know exactly what I want to use in terms of my deconvolution, and I can save a method, and then I could go back and use the auto respect later to process my other data set. So it's kind of a more of a high throughput way of processing your um, experiments. Okay, so uh, when you first click on the manual extract, uh, you'll need to browse for your raw file. I already have something loaded, but normally this would actually be blank and you wouldn't see any of these. Um, so if I click on this button, I can go and browse for my raw files. So I would just go to the, uh, the folder and hit OK. And let's see if I can get it to reset so you can actually see what it would look like if there aren't any files. Oh, there's files everywhere. Okay, so normally the methods wouldn't be over there. Um, so you do have to load a file first. 
I already have something loaded in here, so that's why you're seeing it. So if you click this and click load, and yes, yeah, so we want to proceed. Okay, now you're going to see your different method options. Okay, and so we're, again, we're in manual respect. We selected our raw file. We loaded our raw file. And now you see the different types of methods using the manual respect algorithm. And uh, this is one that I actually created myself. So this would be an example where you make a custom method. But we have some defaults. So we just have a default basic respect. We have a default basic respect for ion trap. We have one using our sliding window algorithm uh, in addition to the respect algorithm. And then we also have an example method uh, for native MS. In this example, I'm going to show you just using um, regular old respect. So once you've done that, uh, we're going to load our method. So the software brings you to the chromatogram page. And so in order to do this, in order to process your experiment, you need to have a source spectrum. And so uh, when you do normal respect without sliding window, you must create a source spectrum. When you use sliding window, our sliding window algorithm is going to help you determine what that source spectrum is. So you no longer have to do it manually. Okay, so that's a very uh, uh, difference between when you use sliding window and when you don't use sliding window, what happens. So uh, we're not using sliding window at this time. So I'm going to just hold my left mouse button down and I'm going to drag and I'm going to create my source spectrum. At this time, if I just want to use the default parameters, I could. I could go to the processing review and I could hit processing and it would process my source spectrum and do the deconvolution. But I'm actually going to go back to the parameters page and I'm just going to take a look to see what my settings are. So when you're in the parameters tab, you have several different tabs. You have deconvolution, you have chromatogram, target sequence, and you have reporting. So let's just first look at the deconvolution parameters for respect. Now the ones I have um, have started to pay attention to are specifically the if you know the target mass you want to enter this as close as you can uh, we know this is an antibody so it's going to be about 150 Daltons 150,000 Daltons um, if you know the mass range of the MSMS data or the MS data you can enter that information here and I think for this experiment those values work if your output range, I like to see, because I know this is intact, I'm going to um, set this to like 140,000, so that it's kind of right around um, my deconvoluted mass. This is the output mass range of your deconvoluted spectrum, so you can uh, set that accordingly. You don't have to change it, but I kind of like to do that. If you have an idea of the charge state ranges, so I think in this specific data, it's going to be about 30 to 70. This gives you more accurate results. So we can apply these changes, and then we can also save this method. And when we save this method, we can um, reuse this method for other data files. OK, so that's adjusting our deconvolution parameters. For a chromatogram, we've already chosen our source spectrum. We don't, at this point, I'm not going to adjust anything. You could use restricted time range. And you could also use um, auto averaging spectrum, that or use auto spectral averaging as well. Uh, but it, for this data set, we're not going to do that. Something that was new to deconvolution 4.0 was the ability to do a uh, target um, sequence matching. And so what happens here is this is reading uh, the global uh, protein sequence manager table. Remember when we first started this video, I added my protein sequence in. And you should be able to see that from the list. And it's right here. So I can click it. I could edit it from here if I need to. But I'm going to add it to my method. And so now it's part of my method. One thing that's very important in deconvolution for intact, if you're doing um, subunit analysis, let's say that you've broken up the antibody into different pieces, so you have the light chain and the heavy chain, um, you would want to bring those in as two different sequences because your light chain and your heavy chain are going to weigh different amounts. When you bring them in as one sequence, it's looking at the sum of the sequence of, of both. Remember, it adds everything up. So we added this up to be about 145,000 Daltons, which is what the mass we expect to see. But if we're doing light chain and heavy chain, we want to have those as separate sequences. And you would then add them both here at the same time. Same thing with subunit analysis.
Uh, for the reporting, this is okay. We're just going to use the defaults. I'm going to save the method because we added our sequence. We can click, we've got our source spectrum. That looks great. So now let's come back to our processing review page and let's go ahead and process. And so the software is going to go through and it's going to use that source spectrum. We see our deconvoluted spectrum here. We can zoom in and now you'll notice that the peaks are labeled. So we actually have identifications on our peaks. And so uh, you can also, you can see it here, but then you can click down here in the table and you can click on each individual one. You can pull out and then you can see all, this is a, in this example, we um, searched the CHO uh, and glycosylation database. And so you're seeing the different um, glycoforms uh, for this antibody. Okay, so you, you can choose different ones if, if it's not matching the one that you think is correct. Um, so you can also expand the column and you can see all the different charge states. You can move the windows. You can see up here, uh, it'll highlight, let's see if it, and you can see the little dots uh, show the, the different envelopes of the charge states that were used for the deconvolution. We can expand this out. If you have different experiments where you process this data file using respect, it will show you the different results here. And here's your parameters that you actually used. And the other thing we can do is we could set this file. Um, well, first of all, we can save our results. So let's save our results. And we can say um, intact. Oops, example, no spaces. Okay, we can save that. And then we can also set this as reference. And I'll show you um, intact example. Okay, we're going to set that as a reference. So now let's go back to our home page for intact analysis. Now, maybe we, we have two other files that we want to process. Okay, so let's go to our auto respect and we're going to select our intact method. Okay, and we could look at it just to make sure that it looks okay. And it should have our changes that we made and it does. Make sure it has our target sequence in, which it does. Okay, so that's good. So we'll go back. So we think it's a good method. Okay, now let's select our two raw files, which are the same protein, but we just acquired this data a while ago. Let's add it to the queue. So now you see that both of those are added into the queue and let's run. So it's going to process each one of these. Okay, the first one's completed. And once the second one's and the second one's completed. So I'm going to click on here and I'm going to open the results. Okay, so this is for our second file. And now we can do a comparison. So here was our reference file. Remember we set our first, our intact example as our reference file. So we can select it and we're going to say select. And now we can do the comparison. And if we want to zoom in, we can zoom in. We can hide this information so we can see a better view. And you can see a comparison between the two different files. Okay, um, so that's it for how to uh, use uh, the Intac workflow. So in this example, we talked about using the RESPECT algorithm. Um, so please see other examples on how to use RESPECT with sliding window or the extract algorithm for deconvolution. Thank you.